quote for today comes from a woman who writes, Black Friday is for amateurs. Real women shop all the time. Today is November 27th. It is the last Sunday of the liturgical year as we prepare for Advent, which begins tonight at the Vigil Mass, this holy season of Advent. And what is Advent all about? It is about preparing our hearts for Christ. That's why the Blessed Mother is the greatest Advent saint, because Our Lady is the perfect model for our discipleship. She is our spiritual mother. And as, as a disciple, it says, she listened to the word of God. She kept the word of God and cherished it in her heart. She treasured the word of God in her heart, and then she acted upon it. So we want to, as a church and as a parish, consecrate this coming Advent to our Blessed Mother's special intercession, that she will help us to prepare our hearts for Christ at Christmas. Because really what Advent is all about is to have Jesus be formed within us, to Jesus to be born within us and to grow within us. That's what the saints and the fathers of the church have said, to become a saint is allowing Christ to be born and to grow within us so that we might increase and Jesus, we might decrease and Christ might increase. So Our Lady is that perfect intercessor for us, our mother, our disciple of Christ. And so we want to entrust this Advent and consecrate it to our Blessed Mother that we look upon these next four weeks, beginning tonight, as a retreat, a retreat with Mary. Advent should be a retreat with Mary so that we can grow closer to Christ, that she can prepare our hearts to accept Christ with great joy at Christmas. And just as Christ was conceived and born within her, born from her, so Mary will help us to have Jesus grow within us during this holy season. When we see our Blessed Mother, we see her as a great woman of prayer, a woman of silence, and a woman who loves sacred scripture. The tradition is that she was raised in the temple where she read sacred scripture and she memorized it. That's why she could sing her Magnificat so beautifully, drawing from all these Old Testament uh, phrases. And our Blessed Mother is a great example for us during this Advent as we enter into Advent tonight to spend more time in prayer, more time in silence, and more time reading sacred scripture. And when we think of our Blessed Mother, <clears throat> Especially, for example, at the Annunciation, we should imitate our Blessed Mother at the Annunciation because she was a woman of faith, a woman of trust, and a woman of obedience. She, the tradition is that she was kneeling in prayer when the angel Gabriel visited her, that Our Lady had the scriptures open, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, that one day a virgin would be with child and give birth to a son who would rule the nations. And as Our Lady read that verse, the angel Gabriel appeared to her and asked her, would she be willing to give God a human nature? Would she be willing to be the mother of God? And Mary, of course, knew that the Messiah would be the suffering servant. And yet she said yes. Mary would embrace the joys, but she would also embrace the sufferings that would come from being the mother of the Messiah, who would be rejected and crucified and yet would be raised again. At the Annunciation again, so we see Mary's faith, trust, and obedient, obedience, and those are virtues we should, we should try to develop during this Advent season, faith, trust, and obedience. And then at the visitation, Mary trusted that what the angel Gabriel said was true, that her cousin Elizabeth, even though she was advanced in age, she was with child. So our Blessed Mother had trust, and so she began left the, leaving in haste to go into the hill country to take care of her cousin Elizabeth. And we see another great hallmark of Advent, which should be charity towards our neighbor, love of neighbor. In this case, it was her elderly cousin. Mary did the work of mercy by going to take care of Elizabeth, by visiting her to help her give birth to the John the Baptist. I'm sure she cooked meals for Elizabeth and did all these works of mercy feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, clothing the naked, taking care of her cousin. So we see, again, our Blessed Mother during this Advent season as a great woman of mercy. And then we see at the nativity of our Blessed Mother, giving birth to Christ in that cave, 
in Bethlehem. As Bishop Sheen says, Jesus was the first caveman. He was the, the new Adam. <clears throat> and that our Blessed Mother had to give birth to Jesus in poverty, in hardship, in simplicity. Many people during this Advent season are struggling with uh, poverty, for example, other hardships, and we ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for them, that they will be strengthened during this time as they prepare for Christmas, just as Our Lady experienced many hardships and poverty. Imagine traveling on a donkey from Nazareth to Bethlehem when you're about to give birth. Think of the hardships of our Blessed Mother. And then I would say lastly, it is November 27th, and it happens to be the feast day of St. Catherine Labore, and when the Blessed Mother gave the miraculous medal to St. Catherine Labore. So as we begin Advent tonight, I, I hope all of you and encourage all of you to wear your miraculous medal. There is a special enrollment prayer. You should, have, you should be enrolled in the miraculous medal, just like you are enrolled in the brown scapular. The Blessed Mother promised that whoever wears the miraculous medal, especially if they wear it around their neck, and with confidence will receive great graces from God, tremendous graces. So wear your miraculous medal, wear your scapular, and pray your rosary every day during Advent, especially the joyful mysteries, meditating upon the Annunciation, the Visitation, the Nativity, etc., and then praying for those virtues that we mentioned today, faith, trust, obedience, uh, love of neighbor, acceptance of the cross and hardships in life. And I think if we do that, we will have a very good and holy Advent season. The Mass today that I'm saying is the votive Mass of Mary, Mother of the Church. Not only is Mary Mother of the Church, but she's the Mother of each one of us, and she wants us to experience the great joy of receiving Christ at Christmas. So we now consecrate and entrust this Advent as a retreat, asking our Blessed Mother that it will be a very good and holy four weeks as we prepare with Mary to pray in silence, to read the Word of God, and so that we can, just like Mary, accept the Word of God in our heart.